Hello and welcome to Hard Money. I'm Natalie Brunel. Please excuse my voice this week. I'm recovering from laryngitis. Also, help us grow this show and get all the most important pieces of Bitcoin and economic news out to a wider audience by hitting like on this video and subscribing to the Hard Money Show page so you never miss any content. The Federal Reserve and other central banks are keeping an eye on financial tremors in the wake of aggressive interest rate hikes across the globe. The U.S. Fed has been raising interest rates faster than any time since the 80s to fight the nearly 40-year high rate of inflation. Rate hikes are generally aimed at restoring supply and demand imbalances by slowing demand, but they've also helped spark a turbulent macro environment, which is exacerbated by geopolitical conflicts and disruptions. So central banks are essentially facing a moving target. Fed Vice Chairwoman Lael Brainerd characterized the potential for these unforeseen events to drive prices higher in spite of efforts to get the situation under control. Brainerd said, quote, There is a risk supply disruptions could be prolonged or aggravated by Russia's war against Ukraine, COVID-19 lockdowns in China, or weather disruptions. Monetary policy will need to be restrictive for some time to have confidence that inflation is moving back to target. For these reasons, we are committed to avoiding pulling back prematurely. Investment strategist Lynn Alden warns of potential treasury market disorder as the likely limiting factor of the Fed's plan on monetary tightening. Quote, there is a good chance that the U.S. Treasury market or adjacent markets will run into liquidity problems before inflation is back to 2 percent and before unemployment increases significantly. After 47 years, Ray Dalio, billionaire hedge fund founder, has stepped down from his position at Bridgewater Associates, remaining on the board but giving up control and voting rights. The world's largest hedge fund currently has $150 billion in assets under management. Dalio has called Bitcoin a younger generation's alternative to gold and said that it has merit. Now back to the volatility, the credit markets have yet to break here in the U.S., forcing a Fed pivot, but we've already seen an about face in the U.K., where debt markets became so dislocated, the Bank of England stepped in to buy unlimited amounts of longer duration securities. The British pound has recovered as a result, and the U.K. government is now reversing part of the tax cut policy that sent the pound crashing. Elsewhere in Europe, Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank have become the subjects of insolvency concerns after the bank's credit default swaps rose sharply last week, a signal of investor worries about their financial strength. The bank's stock prices also plummeted to all-time lows as of Monday, and there's speculation about whether we're seeing another Lehman Brothers moment unfolding, and if that could mean a major financial crisis is incoming. It reminds me of the saying, which snowflake will start the avalanche? Meanwhile, the UN has issued a warning to the Fed and other central banks that there is a substantial risk of a global economic downturn if they don't stop raising interest rates. According to the Wall Street Journal, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development estimated that a percentage point rise in the Fed's key interest rate lowers economic output in other rich countries by 0.5 percent and economic output in poor countries by 0.8 percent over the subsequent three years. A little reminder that even the UN seems to be echoing the metaphor of the U.S. dollar as the cleanest dirty shirt in the pile. Welcome to October. It's going to be a bumpy ride. All right, let's turn now to some Bitcoin-focused headlines. A federal panel that monitors financial risks is once again calling for more regulation in the crypto markets. The Financial Stability Oversight Council, which is led by the Treasury Department, issued its first major report on cryptocurrencies this week. Their main conclusion was that most crypto tokens are too volatile in terms of price and that without more oversight, it could negatively impact the entire financial system. They specifically highlighted the risks of stable coins, the collapse of Terra, and the subsequent bankruptcy of Celsius, where many investors were left stranded and unable to access their assets. In his opening remarks, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler talked about how cryptocurrencies were created and why Bitcoin is different from crypto. The first big crypto token, Bitcoin, was proposed 14 years ago this month on a cypherpunk mailing list. It was Halloween night, 2008, in the middle of the financial crisis. And Satoshi Nakamoto wrote, about a new way to move value on the internet without a central intermediary. Nakamoto, we still don't know who she, he, or they were, didn't have faith in the financial sector overseen by folks like us sitting around this table. The report urged all agencies, including the SEC and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, to prioritize crypto enforcement and recommended that Congress provide regulatory agencies with more resources to police crypto.
Speaking of policing crypto, Kim Kardashian has agreed to pay a $1.2 million fine to the SEC as part of a settlement after the reality star promoted Ethereum Max on Instagram without disclosing she was paid for the posts. As part of the settlement, she is not allowed to promote any crypto securities for the next three years. The SEC says this case is a reminder to the public to be cautious when taking financial advice from celebrities and encourages the public to do their own research before investing. The current bear market is creating buying opportunities for some of the biggest Bitcoin bulls. NYDIG, the New York Digital Investment Group, has raised $720 million for its institutional Bitcoin fund. According to the company, its Bitcoin balances are up almost 100% compared to this time last year. NYDIG is working on allowing more people to get their salaries paid in Bitcoin and accelerating the Lightning Network. In another sign of Bitcoin adoption, the largest telecommunications company in Spain is now accepting Bitcoin as payment. Telefonica is partnering with Bit2Me, the largest crypto exchange in Spain, to facilitate real-time payment conversions from euros to Bitcoin. The company says it has seen a huge demand from customers wanting the service. Spanish interest in Bitcoin continues to grow. This past summer, RCD Español became the first pro soccer team in Spain to accept Bitcoin as payment, and also Spanish airline Vueling will accept Bitcoin in 2023. Bitcoin hodlers indeed have diamond hands. According to new data from analytics firm Glassnode, almost 62% of all Bitcoin has not moved in over a year. That means holders saw the price reach its all-time high of around $69,000 last November to its cycle low of $17,500 this June and still Bitcoiners are not selling. At the same time, Bitcoin's hash rate has hit a new all-time high, which is great news for the overall security of the network. Miners are continuing to validate blocks despite the price drawdown of the last few months. According to Brains Insights, the mining hash rate peaked at 258 exahashes per second on October 4th. So the price may be down 58% year to date, but hash rate is up 43% over the same period. A quick update regarding Celsius founder and former CEO Alex Mashinsky. According to the Financial Times, the former leader of the now bankrupt company withdrew $10 million just before Celsius froze all customer withdrawals. A spokesperson for Mashinsky says he only withdrew a percentage of his account to pay for state and federal taxes. As Ross Ulbricht is starting his 10th year in prison, the Silk Road founder is apologizing and expressing regret. In a Twitter post managed by his family, Ross said he screwed up and ruined his life, caused a lot of people pain, and feels immense regret. Ulbricht is serving a life sentence for facilitating illegal sales online and used Bitcoin as payment for those transactions. Ulbricht is a revered figure by many Bitcoin enthusiasts who feel his punishment is unjust, especially for a first-time offender charged with nonviolent crimes. Several groups have been working on his release for years. Whenever we reference El Salvador on the show, it's usually in the context of being the first country to make Bitcoin legal tender. However, a new short film by Bitcoin shooter called Comeback Country is exploring how El Salvador is quickly becoming the fastest growing and safest country in Latin America. The documentary also explores how the country has evolved since their civil war and rampant corruption and is now flourishing financially and reducing crime. The documentary is only 11 minutes long and available for free on YouTube. Speaking of El Salvador and Bitcoin, President Nayib Bukele wrote an op-ed for Bitcoin Magazine as the country celebrates its one-year anniversary of making Bitcoin legal tender. In the article, he mainly takes aim at his critics, writing that most of his detractors are from the powerful elites that are only mad about the move because it limits their control over El Salvador's money supply, loans, credit ratings, and above all, it drives the narrative. Bukele claims that a lot of mainstream news outlets have been reporting that El Salvador's Bitcoin experiment has largely failed with little adoption and a $50 million paper loss on its holdings. But he argues those claims, saying the country hasn't sold any Bitcoin, so technically there's no loss. Moreover, he said most articles fail to mention that since making Bitcoin legal tender, the nation's GDP rose by more than 10% or $4 billion, tourism rose by 52%, job growth grew by 7%, and internal revenue rose by 37%, making it a banner year for the small country. Bukele closes the article by saying that if you're still bearish on El Salvador and Bitcoin, stop drinking the elite's Kool-Aid and take a look at the facts. 
All right, we're excited to share next week, we will be producing hard money from Europe. We'll be reporting on growing Bitcoin adoption around the world and bringing you interviews shot live at the Bitcoin Amsterdam conference. I'll be speaking there and wherever you live, you can still get tickets and join us. Also, go ahead and leave us a comment and share who you want us to speak to in Amsterdam. Head to b.tc slash conference and use the code HODL for 10% off your tickets. Thank you so much for watching this week's edition of Hard Money and Putting Up With My Voice. Our goal is to give you the latest headlines impacting Bitcoin and the global economy while bringing you original interviews straight from the biggest names in the space. I'm Natalie Brunel and I'll see you next week.